Hey, I just wanted to point out another little quick thing about user interface, user experience. Here I am viewing YouTube in dark mode, which I prefer 99% of the time. Um, dark mode's especially good for people with certain sensitivity issues in their eyesight. And also if you're obviously if you're in like a dark setting, like if you're trying to go to bed, fall asleep watching something, um, or I don't know, maybe that's not the best example for falling asleep watching something, but if we're in a darker environment, we often prefer dark mode because then it's less brightness and intensity on our eyes. It can save battery. It has lots of advantages. I would suggest reading up on it for yourself, um, dark mode versus light mode and whatnot. But anyway, um, so YouTube after so long finally started offering this feature I want to say roughly a year ago or something but uh, and I've liked it I I always do YouTube in dark mode if it's not in dark mode I feel like whoa what side am I on and I'll quickly change it you can get to dark mode by clicking up here I think maybe this would be the the three vertical dots like that if you're not logged in and you can still get there and then you just go to dark theme and switch this little switch so while I'm on the topic, um, sort of an overlapping issue is that, that dark theme is there. It's sort of, I don't know, it's kind of convenient on one hand, but why isn't the switch just right there? Like, why do I have to open up a secondary window? And then sometimes, like, as you can see right here, this window's kind of blending in, and even in light mode, it tends to do that. And lately, I've been using YouTube enough to where I'm kind of, like, habitually tuned to how to do this, but... I remember one day, like a month back, I hadn't been fiddling with YouTube that much that often, at least not coming into YouTube itself. And I was like, kept trying to go into dark mode and I was like, I would click that. And then I thought like, okay, I clicked it. It should be on now. And then I'm like going about like doing other stuff. And it took me a minute to realize like, oh, I'm not, I need to flip this switch. And so right there, you can tell like if your eyes were kind of adjusted to that dark, that me switching I should have warned you just in case you're watching this in a dark setting I'm sorry but um, it goes full bright and you can kind of feel your eyes like do that thing like when you uh, maybe get up to use a restroom and flip on a light switch full bright or something and it's like oh you know you can feel your your pupils like contracting in your eyes and like that and sometimes you it can even you feel a little bit of pain maybe some people from what I understand can feel a lot of pain from that so anyway that's how you get into dark mode, right? So that's what I, I just realized I would like to also point out was that how you've got to dig, that's a two-step, you know, two-step process. And then it's a little bit, it's like dark theme, da 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 It like describes it as if we don't know what um, dark theme is. Another issue is that if I, uh, that I'm pretty sure that's device specific, which can come in handy. I can, maybe in some circumstances for some people, but for me it doesn't because if I were to go use my phone now, it wouldn't be in dark mode. So that would kind of bum me out. They should maybe offer like a checkbox to set it like globally or as default for my profile, you know, and then on each device if I want to set, set it to light mode and then uncheck the default for profile kind of thing or something, that would be a cool option. But the main point, which I, it always takes me the longest to get to is that uh, so this is YouTube right and so I expect anything under the youtube.com umbrella now to default to dark mode now that I'm logged in I have that turned on within this browser on this particular device so I'm gonna go to YouTube studio warning brightness coming up it will go back to full bright and apparently YouTube studio even though it feels a lot like YouTube it's under the youtube.com umbrella. It does have this little sub right here for studio.youtube, but still that that shouldn't there that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be like a whole, you know, that studio.youtube is a, kind of art, arbitrary. They they could have just as easily put that in youtube.com/studio. That's just sort of like a aesthetic preference or hierarchical preference for the uh, site designers. Um, but if you come in here, you can see 
I don't see anything about setting a dark mode in here and it's gone from the light mode or excuse me and from the dark mode just blasted me into this bright mode so that's pretty frustrating and I I just feel like that makes me feel a lot less like this is a more rinky dink product it's kind of like with a typical presentation which you know I'm obviously guilty of not doing maybe the best preparation but uh, they say when I took a class on speech they one of the points was um, you know with especially visual presentations is you want to make the audience feel like you care about them and this loses that you know I see this um, the new creator roundup I'm sure a lot of people like this column right here maybe I'd have to assume but I don't I never I rarely ever find anything in this column that it's worth clicking on so and there's no way to like disable it um, so I feel like I feel left out I feel like okay they don't want to take the time to make the dark mode consistent across their platform they're losing that consistency and then they have they're kind of like pushing this other stuff that I see personally as junk on me so that's kind of disappointing and the very last thing since it is also overlapping is uh, these thin scroll bars right here I'm getting better at clicking on them because what I do is I have a really cheap mouse it's just my preference and I've been using it for years the scroll wheels busted I'm spinning the scroll wheel nothing nothing happens because uh, the scroll wheel is just <laughs> from being such a zealous computer user I will wear stuff into the ground if it's not extremely durable you know and I don't see the point of just purchasing tons and tons of plastic and stuff it's like I don't need it so what I do is I can uh, push down the middle mouse button and scroll like that in a lot of scenarios or I'll just grab the scroll uh, thumb in the gutter and drag it up and down to accomplish scrolling so this right here to me for lack of a better term is just half baked half assed because you know it's almost leaning towards being an indicator more than it is being a tactile thing that you can use and I feel once again it's like I have this set in my preferences um, and these operating systems and various application environments and stuff are getting worse and worse for allowing users to uh, dial in their preferences it seems like because I might even make this a few pixels wider I should dig in I think I use a third-party program to do that because it requires some like archaic registry setting or something that you know you can't even be done in a user-friendly way which is just ridiculous especially in the age of we're supposed to be like being accessible right we're supposed to focus on accessibility and stuff and it's like not only in a lot of situations are people with disabilities such as blindness being completely just left at the doorstep but they don't even they're not even taking into consideration some of these basic things that have you know that apply to most everybody for decades so this why not make this a preference if I'm willing to dig in and adjust that preference I know that there is this stupid little trade-off of cheaping out and saying oh somebody might dig in and change that preference and then forget that they digged in or not mean to dig in and change that preference and then that becomes a support issue so that's what a lot of this is balanced against too is that now they're gonna have to deal with like support emails or you know maybe some amount of user dissatisfaction because you know something changed and they can't reset it back uh, one thing that sort of kicked in in the mid 90s was the idea of context menus right you right click somewhere and you get these pop-up menus this is the browser is what's giving me this menu right here um, I know that like YouTube and stuff isn't or I shouldn't say some places will allow you like if I was watching a YouTube video right now and I right clicked on the video screen it would give me a dark mode if I was in dark mode thing and I would be able it would be like a YouTube specific thing but I know that that's kind of tricky that's not really standardized in browsers and it's not quite as easy as it seems at least if you want to go back and support a variety of browsers and whatnot um, but context menus I think are our friends so like maybe going forward it would just be nice to see that like okay if I want to adjust this scroll bar I just right click on it and then there's the option 
so everything could become as intuitive of, or maybe you know in a more mobile device environment it would be a long press is usually you hold something down for a second or two and that usually will pop up a context menu if it's available and that way people can get used to that they can get used to that idea with things and it will be easier for them if you're like me and you're busting scroll wheels and stuff and you know right here that um, I'm middle clicking and it's not doing the drag like it should so I don't have that middle click drag in here because I get the finger on every square pixel you know I have to basically be in a neutral area to get that drag effect so one trick is that since my mouse is not it's literally like a five dollar mouse or something it's difficult I'm getting better at it but to like go completely horizontal and land on something like see I'm just missed it and that would cause it to change um, one trick is to come in at an angle you kind of increase the resolution of the mouse effectively by coming in at the, that angle and it's a lot easier to uh, if you're dealing with stuff like me but anyway those things I feel are important to uh, user interface and user experience and most especially the switching back and forth between dark and bright mode because of um, there's the worst thing I mean it's one thing to to already be in bright mode right then your eyes are adjusted you know even if it's not your personal preference your eyes will adjust to that bright mode but when you're switching back and forth especially unexpectedly on the same exact website from that dark to bright it's that shift to that brightness that is worse than just having a constant and consistent brightness Thanks for listening and checking that out. And if you're a developer, especially front-end developer, thank you for taking this into consideration.